Hi, everybody. Can everyone hear me in the back okay? All right, just want to make sure. So uh, as they introduced me, I work at a Dairy Queen. I'm going to start my TED Talk by talking about a Dairy Queen story. And so I was at work one day, and my coworker asked me, have you ever had dog before? And I thought that was a weird way to ask the question. So nevertheless, I responded, yeah, I have three. There's my adorable chocolate lab, Bridget, who loves to go for walks, Oliver, who loves to play fetch, and Daisy, who loves to seal shoes. And when I told him that, he seemed confused, and like it didn't answer his question right. So he rephrased the question, no, have you ever eaten dog before? And I thought, is, was he trying to like make me upset or like angry? I just explained to him my three pet dogs. Why would I ever eat dogs? But I knew why he asked, and he asked because I was Asian. And so, you know, I wanted to initially blow up, and I knew that if I did, and if I got upset, then it wouldn't do anything because there was a real level of ignorance. And so, I had to explain to him that no, Asian Americans don't eat dogs, and even though I don't look like you doesn't mean I'm any less American than you are. And so, you know, I was born here like him, and also like him, the weirdest food I've probably eaten would be Scrapple. Now, um, so I began to wonder, where is all this ignorance coming from? And, you know, why is there so much ignorance around Asians? So I came to two conclusions. One is the lack of diversity in many of our lives. And so in my life, uh, I am the only Asian person in uh, a lot of the people I know's lives, or at least one of the few. And so their entire perspective on a race is dependent on you know, my interactions with them and one other thing. And that other thing is media. TV shows, YouTube, comedy, movies, Netflix, you name it. These are all forms of media where we you know, establish preconceptions of people. And so minorities have always struggled with uh, how people perceive us. And a big part of that is how we're, or how our characters are portrayed on screen. And so this is apparent, or this problem isn't a uniquely Asian problem, but the way that Asians are portrayed is unique. Now, African Americans have also had uh, struggles with media representation, and that's apparent in the, um, uh, that there was barely any black actors nominated for the Oscar Awards last year. Uh, but there are never any Asian actors at all. And so the scarcity of Asian actors on screen uh, forces us into uh, limited stereotypical narratives that are often portrayed of us. And so uh, often we're portrayed as the model minority. Uh, and the model minority myth basically claims that Asians, as a minority, uh, because they do well in America, that any minority can. Uh, and so therefore there's no racism. And so uh, this myth uh, has a lot of stereotypes associated with it, and some of them are the problems with the model minority myth are on an interracial scale and on a societal scale. So on an interracial scale, some of the stereotypes associated are uh, nerdy, good at math, uh, introvertive, um, wants to be a doctor or a lawyer or something successful. Men are emasculated and women are hypersexualized, uh, and a lot, some of these stereotypes play into portraying Asians as foreign. Um, like really broken accents. And so uh, these are all very common stereotypes that uh, represent Asians in Hollywood. And uh, let's look at an example. So how many of you here have ever seen the movie Mean Girls? Anybody? A lot of people? Good. So in Mean Girls, in the opening scene, they pan through the cafeteria and go through all the cliques in the school. And so uh, there's two that really stand out to me. One on the left is the cool Asians. Uh, which all speak Vietnamese, and uh, the only way you can understand them is through subtitles in the movie. And then the other Asians, that the ones that speak English in the movie, are called the nerdy Asians, and they're all on the math team. And so the problem with Mean Girls and most movies that, that have Asian characters in them is that they portray uh, Asians as either foreign and, or the model minority. And so my coworker thought that I might have eaten dogs before because, you know, I'm Asian and I look like some of the characters on the screen who, you know, may have uh, done that. But, um, you know, he looks at me as foreign, even though I grew up, you know, just a few miles from him. And so, you know, sometimes when you're perceived as foreign all the time, 
you feel like it, and you feel like you don't belong. And so, on uh, back to a societal scale, and the problem with model, the model minority myth is that, um, as I said earlier, it claims that there is no racism because a minority can do well in the United States. And so, in the 1960s, it was created as a narrative to smear African Americans and Hispanics. And the problems with the model minority myth are that it holds down groups of people and neglects the issues that are specific to their communities. And it also neglects the issues that are specific to the Asian American community. The Asian American community is one of the most diverse communities that we can have. You know, Asia is a gigantic continent that encapsulates many different cultures and languages. And it all narrows them down into one narrative. And that narrative is a successful narrative. And uh, because, or it claims that because Asians are successful, um, it hides the problems that are within. So for example, Asian Americans are the most educated group in the United States. But in that subgroup, or a subgroup within Asian Americans are Cambodians. And Cambodian Americans face severe educational disadvantages and um, struggles as opposed to any other group in the United States. And Asian American women face the highest suicide rates. And so all of these problems that are very real problems are all neglected and swept under the rug because all Asians are portrayed as the model minority. And uh, African Americans and Asian Americans face different types of racism today, no doubt. But we both face social disadvantages that are derived from uh, poor media representation and you know how stereotypes of us are portrayed. So uh, this is where my story applies to everyone, because no matter you know who you are, we all consume media, and we all um, form perspectives on other people. And so we can't let you know, what we see on TV or in movies control how we perceive and treat others. So um, for an example. Uh, this can have a damaging effect. When I was in seventh grade, I had a friend who claimed that Asians couldn't have six packs. And so this is a classic example of the emasculation of Asian men. And uh, I always grew up thinking that you know, I had to escape this like, awkward Asian stereotype, and I would have to work really hard to do that. And so I made her a bet. I had six months to get a six pack, and I was going to prove that she was wrong and that Asians are, can be masculine. And the stereotype was false. And six months went by, and I lost. But, <laughs> but I didn't lose because I was Asian. I lost because I was a skinny 12-year-old. Now, am I good at math? Maybe. But any you know, math test scores or whatever, I would attribute to you know, doing my homework and um, amazing teachers. And the problem with the mon model minority myth is on an individual level, it devalues us because it says, hey, you're not you know, good at this because of the hard work you've put in or uh, your talent or anything like that, only because of your race. And this goes beyond minorities. So if you're white and you like Starbucks, it's not because you're white. It's because Starbucks is good. You know, I'll admit it. <laughs> um, and so that's how, you know, even though our stereotypes may align sometimes, you know, they aren't re accurate representations of who we are as people. Because as you know, humans, we are so much more complex than a singular narrative that can describe uh, or tries to describe an entire race. And so my story on the outside is about the Asian American experience. But if you take a step back, it's about all of us. You know, no matter who we are, our perspectives on other people and their perspectives on us are all influenced by media. And how we let that you know, control how we treat each other and how we see each other is incredibly important. You know, stereotypes can have a damaging effect as they aren't accurate representations of who we are. And they can create a social ladder where minorities can fall to the bottom. And so who we are as people and our characters are much more deeper and complex than the stereotypes that look like us on screen. Thank you.